Good morning. Class is in session early today. Uh, I've got to do one of these videos a little earlier today because I've got dental surgery. Well, not surgery, dental procedure. I'm getting a couple cavities filled later today, so <laughs> won't be able to talk later tonight. So this will be the only episode today that will be going up. But, uh, this is lecture number seven in my Metal Gear Solid V Explained series. Welcome back. Uh, this will be mission 14 that we're talking about today, Lingua Franca. <clears throat> now, before I go into this, I want to mention, to add to all the talk from all the stuff I said in mission 13 yesterday, um, there's a, one of the truth tapes is a conversation, a recording of a conversation between Zero and Skullface, and... I mentioned some parts of it in, the, uh, in previous lectures already, but there's another part of it I wanted to mention. Uh, that meant They mentioned Rhodesia specifically in this, in this conversation. Um, Skullface says, no, we're led to believe that he's talking about Miller. He says, our man is making noise in Rhodesia or something like that. Uh, and we think they're talking about Miller. So... Going back to what I've said, if, if the real cause Miller was Roy Campbell and he was really killed in the mutiny, then this Miller in Rhodesia that Skullface is talking about kind of makes no sense, actually. Maybe another copy of Miller, you know, in Big Boss's whole scheme, maybe he was using copies of Miller, but it seems more likely to me <clears throat> that our man is a reference, actually, to Chico. Skullface, imagine... After this has happened, they've had the the New York scenario kind of come and go. I also want to mention, I think this fellow who's got uh, the British accent who sounds like Zero, this is probably the, the decoy of Zero, the proxy, who was swapped out before they went to the hospital in New York. He was probably the one that Fox was protecting. And now, Skullface and Zero here, Fox and, and this stand-in, are talking more. They're... they're creating more context. Really, it's like cover for their operation, but it's also creating more context to explain things. So they're talking about our man in Rhodesia as kind of cover for, we'll get to it later, but essentially Chico had been captured by Big Boss and his whole crew in the, in the fall of MSF. And I think Quiet may have been captured for a little bit, but probably escaped. They are spoken of symbolically as the same thing, so it's it's hard for me to imagine that they were separated for too long at this point. Um, I think the way Eli is told to us to have been in Cypher's care and then escaped and then showed back up in Africa, I'll get to it later, but that relates to how I think Chico showed up in Rhodesia. <clears throat> and I don't think he like escaped care and then just showed up there on his own. That doesn't make sense. It makes more sense that he was brought there and that the story about his escape was probably a cover in order to <clears throat> give the organization that was using him uh, plausible deniability. So, mission 14, Lingua Franco. So what's happening here? Why, is, why do we care about all these prisoners all of a sudden and these, and these Brits and all this stuff? Are they even Brits? Mm -hmm. I'll get to it. At the end of the previous mission, Pitch Dark, there's, after you blow up the oily water separator, you get an alert out on the base, and if there's anybody left on the base, they're instantly looking for you. And then outside the base, a bunch of walker gears and squads come in and close off the base, and if you don't get out of there immediately, you get, you get caught, essentially. And there's mission tasks relating to <clears throat> getting the walker gears, and there's a mission task relating to getting out of there before it's closed off. Um, I think there actually is. I've seen somebody, I think, pull off uh, one run getting all the mission tasks on that mission. That's kind of impressive to me. But uh, the way it plays out, it kind of implies that there's two different ways it can go. And I think one of the ways it goes, when Snake did this back in, um, in Rhodesia in the 70s, after he sort of uh, blew up whatever it was their facility was that was making parasites, I don't think he was able to escape. I think he was caught and captured. Because we know every snake gets captured at some point in their campaign, right, and ends up in a, in a cell. Now, Chico's kind of already, if he's old fox, he's already kind of done this as a kid, so 
What follows is all kind of commentary on what happened to him the first time he was captured and what happened to him this time he was captured. So we'll see two of the characters here are actually Chico and really Ahab and Ishmael. They're, they're Chico and Old Fox recreated here, this mission. Now, I know also Lingua Franca, if you've played this game, is a frustrating mission to try to do all the, ling- uh, the mission tasks for because there's, a, there's this glitch. And this glitch has been there. <clears throat> pardon me. This glitch has been there since the game released. People have tried to tell Konami about it. They've yelled until they were just blue in the face about it. And uh, Konami's not going to fix it, y'all. The the glitch is there for authorial narrative reasons because this deals with the player's self identity. So the glitches are really avoidable. They're they're known quantities. They're not. We don't like. We don't just have these glitches and we're not we're totally not sure how it works. Like there's ways you can avoid them. Um there are I think there is one glitch that's kind of annoying and there's kind of no way you can avoid it once you get set up and kind of heading in the direction of it, but you can avoid going in the direction of it essentially by controlling the time of this whole mission. Now I've got the my 41 minute all mission tasks version of it pulled up right here and I'm gonna kind of go through it piece by piece and then I'll go through my notes as I'm kind of going along here so when the mission starts out you deploy from the helicopter you run up and if you want to get all the mission tasks you have to get all the conversations with the prisoners now the first one happens pretty quick actually and it's on the the outskirts of the whole camp you're supposed to now for the for the proper part of the mission. You're supposed to tell a interrogator and his Afrikaans to English translator because you need that Afrikaans translator. You just showed up here in this Afrikaans speaking area and you don't speak Afrikaans. Um, oh, also, the reason Venom doesn't speak Russian is because he's he's not the original big boss. <laughs> he's he's a, he's a Spanish speaking guy actually. Uh, and there's some interesting things in this game that you can find in the language. Subtle differences in language if you pull, uh, or if you change it all to, to Spanish and then read everything. Go look at a, I think it's the tape of Quiet Humming. I think it's got a different name in Spanish. Yeah, anyway, so that's a fun little thing you can do. But this first prisoner is being brought up and then the, the interrogator's telling him that I'll interrogate him with the woman, take him over to the cells. So you've actually, we, we've seen this story before. If you've listened to all the Ground Zeroes tapes, Chico tries to infiltrate Gr- uh, Ground Zero, I'm sorry, Camp Omega. And uh, seems like at first he, he, he narrates his, his whole infiltration, right? And again, I think this is probably recontextualization. He may not have had a Walkman with him the first time. Um, <clears throat> I think... Chico was sort of caught probably somewhere on the outskirts of Camp Omega and then brought to whoever the interrogator was, which he could have been Ocelot, maybe? Uh, but I'm gonna I'm just going to stick with what we hear on the tapes. Since it's Skullface the whole time, it's probably Big Boss. So this is Chico getting, this first prisoner getting brought up here. Is, this is Chico getting caught and then getting brought to be interrogated although he's not interrogated at first he's brought over to the, the cells where the woman is that's where pause is so this woman that we're going to see later is sort of a stand-in for pause but then you have to go over you have to let that guy go over to his uh his cell and run over here where this individual guy is being interrogated the interrogator and translator will come over here and the guards here posted on this guy now what are they talking about? It's his last chance. The MPLA's oil field rights is what they want to know about. Where did this information come from? Now, these interrogators, these Afrikaners, they want to know about this intel and where these Brits got this intel. So this intel on the MPLA's oil field rights. Now, so if the MPLA's oil field, the Mafinda oil field that we just blew up is a stand-in for the admin sector of Camp Omega, 
So the MPLA's oil field rights is really the, who was who was running Camp Omega. That's what they want to know. But it's also related to, we'll find out later, the rumors that Posit survived. I said that I think Boss had Miller leak Posit's survival to the rest of MSF in order to draw out any more cipher spies to, to Camp Omega to try to rescue Paz. And they would grab those spies and then interrogate them. So the MPLA's oil field rights and everything here is really tied up with the Paz rumor and Camp Omega and all of that. Because I think part of the Paz rumor was where she was held at Camp Omega on the, the onshore base. And the Afrikaners and the these Brits have had you know some history, the Boer War, if you know about that. Uh, and this guy blames the the, the Afrikaans interrogator blames the the Brit here for you know all of the the past history stuff. So that's like you know this mutiny happened, and now there's aftermath of it. And the people who are still kind of on the big boss's side, they've turned to blaming the zero side. They're like this mutiny wouldn't have happened if if it wasn't you know y'all's fault. Y'all y'all caused so much suffering and blah blah blah. It, it's kind of trying to justify their own terrible actions. Um, it's a common tactic used, like, in gaslighting by abusers, actually. You know, saying that it was you, this guy says, uh, it was you that betrayed us. Saying it was the, it was the Brits that betrayed the Afrikaners. So, in other words, he's trying to say that the Zero people betrayed the Boss people, or really Zero betrayed Boss. Um, but what that really relates back to is that, uh, you know, really Boss is the traitor here. But what we're seeing here is kind of a, like I said, it's a recontextualization. And we're kind of seeing a little bit more of their side of things. So this prisoner inevitably is like, I wasn't the traitor, it was it was the Viscount. And I'll, I'll get to who the Viscount is, but this Viscount figure is kind of a interesting figure. Um... He's Snake. That's that's Old Fox. That's Ishmael. He got captured in the last mission, and now he's he's here. He's the Viscount, and so everybody's being interrogated for you know who who did who caused all this ruckus at, at Camp Omega back then, and I don't think Chico was may, Chico was maybe captured here and interrogated with Paws after the event, uh, but maybe not. I kind of find it hard to believe because I think they were. Because I think they were transformed into like some some crazy violent forms. Um, he may have Chico may have already escaped their their initial kind of care and was like being shuffled around. I'll get to that stuff in a later mission. Um, this other prisoner though is kind of a reference I think to Miller and to 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 really uh, to Campbell and his role in the whole thing. Um, we know, like, since this is kind of a recreation of all the tortures that happened at Camp Omega, Miller was one of those people that, that was tortured. Now, this first prisoner, if you don't intervene after the first interrogation is, is done, that guard who's watching him will execute him pretty quickly, actually. That's the same as, like, the Hamid survivor back in Where Do the Beast Sleep? If you don't intervene... He'll get executed, and you and one of the one of the tasks uh, relates to him. But I don't know if you have to. I'm trying to remember if you have to rescue him for one of the tasks in Beast Sleep. Anyways, but this guy, this prisoner right here, is symbolically linked to the Hamid because of how he's executed uh, if you don't intervene, and that all ties him back to Miller. So this is probably kind of a recreation of Miller's interrogation in Omega. Um, but it may not be, like I said, I don't think the the original Roy Campbell was still alive here in uh, 70. This probably was actually late 75 or maybe early 76, the the reference back in the, the Rhodesia days. I'll get to the time period when this is in uh, Afghanistan and Africa in, in Phantom Pain. You know, I've said it's 86 to 95, but we don't really get a good uh, waypoint, so to speak, for the time period in the Africa campaign until really until we pick up code talker. And so I won't talk about that until much later. Um, the time periods are kind of like here in Africa, our campaign takes much longer than Frank's campaign took back in Rhodesia. Frank's campaign, I think was fairly quick. So he was caught, 
interrogated. Um, let me see. What else do I need to talk about here? The glitch, it's still unfixed. Oh, yeah, and there's also this question. So if Snake was captured in Rhodesia, who saved him? Now, I, I, I really don't have a good definitive answer for that. Um, I'm pausing a little pregnantly there. Um, could have been zero. It, it could have been zero because we've had Huey equated with, with Chico and Venom is Chico. So, in a way, Venom kind of is zero. Um, Venom this expands on... I'll just go ahead and get into it. Venom, like I said, Venom Snake's punished. Venom Snake's kind of a combination of multiple... Snake figures. Now, I think along, along with uh, Chico, like Young Fox, he also kind of stands for Old Fox and Ishmael, but he also kind of stands a little bit for Zero, but I think really more than Zero, he stands for George Sears, for Solidus Snake. Now, we know Solidus Snake was born in 72 or 73. So at this time in 76, maybe early 70 or late 75, he would have been like two or three years old. I'm sorry, no, uh, four or five years old. 72, 76, yeah. But because he's a clone of the full-grown big boss, I think he, he was basically like a 30-some-odd-year-old a man when he was born. So he was he was probably put through a bunch of VR stuff in the in the time of MSF's existence, uh, probably working back with like some secret cipher uh, unit off of MSF's base, maybe back on the land base, maybe somewhere else altogether, maybe in New York, actually. But I think he he's kind of implied to be the one who possibly rescued Ishmael back in 70, uh, 75 or 76. Um, but that's that's just my guess on that. I'm not I'm not totally sure. You can have some fun figuring that one out yourself. So Venom here, the player, stands for whoever saved Snake back then. The Viscount stands for Snake, and the prisoners stand for Paws and Chico and Miller. So these other two prisoners are being kept in the main cell area, and these two cells next to each other are meant to evoke Paws and Chico's cells. Um, there's even I think there's a front and a back section to these cells, and the prisoners are only kept in the front section. There may not be a back section to these cells, but it, it looks like the exact same model. Um, <clears throat> what else is there going on here? The Hamid does... Okay, so the, this whole outfit here, too, at this outpost, it's not really being run by... Saner or Unita, it's it's the CFA. The CFA <clears throat> are the contract forces of Africa. And they're just like a PF in the area. So this is kind of an effect of the whole war economy thing that Big Boss starts up. He starts you know, turning war into a business, and that's I, I really think that came more from him than it came from from Roy Campbell Miller. It just it it doesn't seem like. So because those discussions we hear on the back in the truth tapes between Zero and Miller are actually probably between a proxy of Zero and some. It's probably not the original Miller. It's probably our cause, uh, who I think is Decoy Octopus. So I think what we hear on that tape is actually part of Decoy Octopus's hypnagogic programming to make him think that he's he's got this. Basically, I think his version of events were changed a little bit to make him think that he lived through what Zero lived through, like what we all saw. Like he thinks he was cause, and then he has to like go on this little journey to go find his his snake. Um, that that whole conversation has a lot of between Miller and Zero has a lot of weird things going on, and like I said, I think this is these are like proxies talking to each other. So, do, 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 do. that's the CFA. 
but they're looking into the MPLA, and the MPLA are the zero faction. Because the MPLA kind of are cipher itself, it, and Unita are also kind of cipher itself, but we learn later that, that the, the Unita cipher is really more like XOF, and XOF is there symbolically to stand in for what Big Boss's crew did originally. Uh, you'll note the XOF people are all English-speaking, Okay, I guess I'll get into this now. Let's get into the accents of these prisoners. We're told that they're Brits, right? That they're British, and, and the people speaking to them call them British. But if you listen to these prisoners talk, none of them sound British at all, actually. None of them have a Brit accent at in, in, in the least. They've got American accents. Why would these Brits be captured in Africa... And be talked to as if they're Brits when they're actually Americans. So I'll get to it, but the, the English-speaking people in the in the Phantom Pain, the English-speaking personnel, and the English, you know, Skullface and all that—they're all part of Skullface's plan. And Skullface is old fox, so. Um, so the Viscount is Frank Hunter, and that's why everybody's got American accents. It's because in Rhodesia, these people may have had, probably had uh, American accents who were captured. So, uh, you know, it's kind of exactly hard to say who these other people are that were captured alongside Snake back in Rhodesia, if these people were even back in Rhodesia at all. We know Snake was captured because of what I've been saying about the end of Pitch Dark and the, and the oil field being closed off and all that, <clears throat> and him being the Viscount, but... These other, these other three prisoners might be a recontextualization, and they might be only here in Africa, or uh, in a uh, in eighties, maybe early nineties Africa, and back in seventies Africa, these extra three prisoners weren't here at all, and it was just Snake, because we know every time Snake is captured, he's usually held by himself. So, so the Afrikaners in the Brits conflict stands in for Boss's zero conflict. Frank Hunter is the Viscount. Oh, the Viscount also. Why is it spelled Viscount? Why isn't it Viscount? It's Viscount and Viscount, right? Well, in the Rhodesian conflict, one of the things I stumbled across while reading about all of that is one of the aircraft that was used by the civil um, air services in, uh, in Rhodesia at the time was a British aircraft called the Vickers Viscount or Vickers Viscount. And it was a, I think it was the first turbo-engined dual-prop airplane. I, I pulled up the Wikipedia thing here. Yeah, it was the first turboprop-powered airliner. And it came out in, really in 53. They, they had it, uh, first, its first flight was in 48. So it was one of the first kind of, of the next generation of uh, post-World War II aircraft. And apparently it was a pretty nice aircraft at the time. It was one of the first to give a... Uh, Passengers a little bit better ride with a pressurized cabin, reductions in vibration and noise, and panoramic windows. And so it was a it was a really successful aircraft at the time. Um, and one of them was actually involved in an incident in uh, in Rhodesia. I believe one of them was shot down by, I think it was the Zipra. It may have been Zanla, but one of the two rebel factions that was standing against the, the Rhodesian National Army. So, this whole reference of the plane being, sh the, the Viscount being shot down and all that, that's probably what happened to Frank Hunter back then. He was probably trying to take out some operation that, you know, Big Boss had set up, and then Big Boss was pro probably expecting him, waiting for him, and then had his new, you know, uh, prototype super soldier, you know, exoskeleton units, they're ready to go. And yeah, they're exoskeletons, probably. It's probably where the Cyborg Ninja's exoskeleton really came from. So this anonymous source, these two uh, that are, excuse me, these two prisoners that are, the man and the woman that are interrogated together, they, they say that they're business people and that the interrogator can't believe that they acted on all this based on... A, a rumor that had no source, an anonymous source. And uh, he was like, sure, it sounded you know fishy, but we, we had a lot to gain. That's kind of like 
equivalent to I can't believe how I go back to um, I go back to how I think uh, Big Boss couldn't believe that Chico had cap- had come to Camp Omega, but based off of just that rumor that Pause was held there, and he really had nothing to do with Zero or anything like Boss. Just he's like incredulous at this. He's like he's like you mean to tell me you heard this random rumor that's going around base that's totally sp- you know, speculative and and doesn't really have any source or anything like that. And based off of that, you like sneak into a cargo ship and come over here and walk for days and try to infiltrate this camp and and you get caught. And now you want me to believe that you don't have some kind of a, you know, someone else that you're working for. The boss couldn't believe it. So, and that's kind of what's going on here is the Afrikaners just don't believe they're British captives. Uh, They think they've all, concocted some kind of story together and this these interrogators are going to break him gosh darn it yeah and that's that's kind of probably what happened to chico and pause and why it was like so awful and why there's all this punishment you know narration and theme going on the punishment thing's more than that i'll get to it but it's it starts with chico being sort of uh, you could say punished for something he really had nothing to do with, and he, because of how the parasites work, he internalized that and then probably started doing that to other people, as, as we'll find out. Eli's story in Africa here is mostly Chico's story, but that's for another episode. So let me let me fast forward a little bit here in this mission, and go talk about the final conversation with the Viscount and the glitch and everything. So this glitch happens in a couple of different ways. One way it happens is the Viscount will be uh, escorted by the guard out there. He's held out in like the field. But sometimes when the Viscount gets up and that guard starts escorting him, sometimes the, the Viscount will just hit the ground again. He'll just hit the deck and he's not going to move. And the mission's stuck and you've got to restart it. And it sucks. And now I... I, I I swear I remember I figured out how that one happens. It's like a weird glitch in the in the mission script having to do with I think the day night cycle. Essentially I think if if you don't fulfill all the conditions for the other for for the Viscounts uh, interrogation to take place, meaning if you don't let the other two interrogations happen first, um with enough time after those two for nighttime to fall after that. Essentially so if you finish that second interrogation during the night and they start this guy starts escorting the viscount during the night and then day comes back around they just stop and you have to wait a whole nother day i think I, i'm pretty sure even if you wait a whole nother day the viscount still won't move it's just it's glitched and it's broken in other words in order to avoid the glitch you have to know this mission script and stick to it if you veer from the script too much it glitches out I think that was a thing that was done on purpose. Um, Skullface mentions in his speech, he says this line, sans lingua franca, the world will be torn asunder, and then it will be whole. So the Frankish, the lingua franca refers to the Frankish tongue, as in Frankish, as in French, but if you just, Frank, F-R-A-N-K, Frank Hunter, the Frankish tongue, this is all the language of of Frank Hunter, of, of Gray Fox's origins, essentially. So that's kind of the big theme this mission. Um, and you'll notice this Viscount is telling this, this interrogator to screw off with his nationalism and apartheid stuff because he's, he's not really big on all that kind of stuff. Like I said, he's, he's got the morality uh, thing going. Uh, but yeah, that, that whole conversation, you can just imagine Big Boss talking, or maybe Ocelot working for Big Boss, talking to uh, <clears throat> Ishmael, Snake, after they've captured him, after he's arrived in Rhodesia. And then somebody, another Snake, essentially shows up and, and frees him. And... You know, it really makes more sense to me because the whole Oilix thing is already being set up with Mafinda Oilfield that this is probably Solidus that that Venom Snake is standing in for here. Um, 
And I'll I'll get more into Solidus and the other missions. But I believe that's it. Hopefully that was a little bit shorter. I know I still did have a lot to say about Lingua Franca. I think that's it, yeah. So, you know, go back and try this mission yourself and explore and kind of listen to all the little details and figure out how all this stuff doesn't really line up with what you're told and you'll see, oh, we've been kind of fed a lot of lies by Kaz and, and Ocelot this whole game. They, they, they're they the ones that are programming us. And so, yeah, that's, that's it for Lingua Franca. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Peace out.